I got to hear a fantastic masterclass tonight by the Derva Quartet, and one of the pieces on the program was Beethoven's Opus 95 Quartet, the Serioso, um, the slow movement, which I worked on at a time in my life when I should not have been playing anything like late Beethoven, but it was a huge part of my identity working with the people that I worked with, um, and such an amazing piece. And, um... I was just inspired to talk about it a little bit since I haven't blogged for a while. And um, one of the things that is really fun for me now is to go back to these pieces that I loved at a time when I didn't know how to have feelings in a constructive way and to try to articulate what I really loved about them. And um, that's what I'm going to try to do right now. Um, so... Last semester, I saw this new music concert, and one of the pieces on it was called The Magic of Everyday Objects, and I only got to see it once, or hear it once, and um, I'm not really sure I remember anything about it besides the amazing title, which I've come to think about as a phrase for um, stream of consciousness writing or, you know, Beethoven's motivic use um, in this example. Um, so, uh, what I love about that phrase, um, the magic of everyday objects is that, you know, you have these things that are ordinary and they're made extraordinary. I don't know. That's pretty cheesy. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show how Beethoven kind of does that with, um, eighth notes, eighth notes. So this is the beginning of the slow movement. Um, so for me, that opening cello line sounds pretty resigned. Um, you can't really tell what's going to happen from it. It's just descending and then it comes up later. Um, and then, uh, when the melody starts, what's underneath the melody in the second, um, viola and cello parts are these constant eights, which, um, is a figure that happens throughout the entire movement. And um, I'm just going to play a little bit of the second violin part. The... Um, there's something so stuck about it, just the constant Ds. like this kind of monotonous, you know, plodding, and then it slips into minor so easily, and then major again. Minor again. And um, for me, again, that's just like resignation or kind of an emotional numbness to me because um, it makes everything so vague and it's like a day that you have when things are, you know, okay or like fine one moment and then like not so great the next. And it's just like very stream of consciousness uh, musical writing to me. Um, but so that's the motive that I want to talk about is just these consistent eighth notes that Beethoven writes. Um, and they're pretty ordinary. They're just eighth notes. Um, but they go through this transformation in this movement. Um, the middle section of this movement is a pretty intense fugue, which has all these spiky little notes, but also this really insistent melody. And it's, it's like this movement loses its resigned quality and starts to feel and to, to listen to that breaking and that, that tension starting to come up 
to the surface is really amazing. So, I mean, I would recommend listening to this movement, but um, some of the, uh, the lines in the fugue are like, it starts... So, um, I just played, like, all the instruments parts, which I'm pretty sure is super taboo. But, um, it's that insistent quality and the, the interval changing from the fourth to, um, the tritone. And just, like, kind of reaching more and more with all the spiky stuff in between. And, um, also a lot of slurred, you know, kind of insidious melodic stuff going on. Um, but then you get to the end and it's, it's back to the... Um, resigned stuff but everything is higher so it feels a lot more fragile because of the register change and then um, the next part that I want to play for you is uh, the first time that the eighths kind of have a direction and this was the part that I played when I was like either 14 or 15 and it meant so much to me, and I didn't know why. And it was because this whole movement, I'd just been playing these eights, and they'd been numb, and then finally they were liberated, and they had a direction, and I was able to feel and do something with them. Um, so it's this part. Uh, it's hard to stop. Um, but, uh, so it was that part. Um, another thing that I really like about, um, what Beethoven starts to do, I think, um, more often later on in his quartet writing, is that instead of different characters or different psychological, um, states, he starts to make them kind of a conglomerate of one s psychological state. Uh, so they represent so many things, um, so for me, the part in the second violin is the... Um, so finally there's this downward trajectory, kind of like a character knowing that this is what it is, like things are going downhill, but the effort to keep going up and then not really being able to and then back to the plotting, resignation, hope. So. Uh, that was really moving for me. And then um, it's like all of the trying underneath the first violin part kind of gets it to be free too, because it's also in this kind of... But because all of the other instruments are trying so hard to kind of break through, um, this is kind of like, f for me, um, all the different parts of one psyche, um, where there are parts of you that want to break out so much and then the surface, um, which for me would be the first violin part in this case, is able to kind of lament and break down because um, um, there's this um, So there's the And that long note, um, for me, it's held against four of the sixteenths in all the other parts, I mean, eighths. Um, and that's, like, stubborn for me, resistance to what's really going on, which is this collapse underneath. Um, so there's that resistance. Um, those sixteenths. Um, 
the dots, like all of that is kind of like an ache, but it's so heroic and it seems like denial. I mean, this is not like musicology. These are just my feelings. And there, that rhythm is heartbreaking to me because it's, um, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. um, everything is suddenly in threes and it kind of escapes that, um, mm. binary thing for like one second. Um, so that's really moving to me. Um, I love this piece. I love this movement. I hope you listen to it. Um, all right, so that's all. And, um, okay, good night. <laughs>